brought you snackies. Go away. I have RC Cola, too. <laughs> Darling, why are you crying? Don't fret. I sent the twins on a constitutional across the grounds to get some fresh air. They'll be back in half an hour. <laughs> Is this what has made you so upset? It's dark. Read it. Read it out loud. I want to hear it out loud so I know it's real. Wednesday? Oh my God, when can we get out of this dreadful place? The house is a palace, but that man boy, yeah. <laughs> I've begun to associate the taste of caviar with the pain of listening to him drone on and on about the most boring subjects. And I lived my life as shut in for 30 years, so boring me is not easy to do. I suppose I must continue to tolerate him in order to keep collecting enough money for the surgery. He gives me a $10 bill every time I laugh at one of his terrible jokes. I'd rather die than kiss him. Oh, well. At least the good news about the Brody twins lifts my spirits. Shame about the dead one. Oh, darling. The other one still adores you, doesn't she? I know. Let's give the one who likes you one of my fox stoles or a tennis bracelet. The other one will be green with envy and be practically begging for your affection in no time at all. I don't want to buy love! I wish you could be inside my body for one minute to know what it feels like to be me. It's like when I had tuberculosis and you took me out to the Utah desert and there was nothing but dry, open space for hundreds of miles around us. That is what is inside of me. Those girls were a cool stream of glacier water. My heart bloomed as they nourished it. And now it's all gone. There is nothing left but the dust and the scorpions inside of me. I was never destined to feel love. The desert knows no mercy. Anything you try to plant out there dies. I must accept this emptiness as a blessing, not a curse. I know why I was put here, Mother. My purpose is to bring death. <laughs> 